Hello again, everybody. This is Rocket Rick J18, and today I'm going to show you and talk about uh, a couple of items which are not baseball cards, but uh, rather uh, one is a uh, a pin, and the other is uh, a, a set of team photographs. So, with that in mind. Um, let's take a look at uh, those items and I'll talk to you about them while we're looking at them. Okay, so the first item is not the pen. It is the, the button or pin that you're looking at. And uh, we'll get a little bit better of a close-up uh, to kind of... Uh, Well, it's uh, not going to uh, cooperate uh, terribly much with me. But this, as you can see, is um, a uh, button that commemorates the post-retirement day for Mickey Mantle. And... Uh, it uh, reads, of course, as uh, a day to remember, Sunday, June 8th, 1969 at Yankee Stadium. And there's a really nice photograph of the Mick on there. Uh, Mickey had gone to spring training, but it quickly became apparent to him that he wasn't going to be able to perform uh, the way he wanted to be remembered. And so he announced his retirement without uh, really ever having participated to any significant degree in any of the spring training activities. Uh, there had been a Mickey Mantle day in 1967 or 68. I don't recall exactly when it was, uh, but it was more of a, a celebration of his career uh, with his teammates. So this is the uh, this is the pin here, and uh, very happy to add this to my collection. The next thing I'm going to show you is the 1947 Yankee picture pack, and uh, for that I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit, and you can see that the first picture here is. Uh, Joe DiMaggio. Uh, Joe had uh, been uh, away for his uh, military service in 1942, 40, 43, 44, and 45. 42, 43, 44, and 45. Um, Joe, as military service, um, you know, consisted primarily of uh, entertainment for the most part. I mean, he was overseas, but uh, not really in any forward combat zone. Um, in any case, uh, uh, he uh, performed his service without uh, any complaint or out any uh, regret at having had his career interrupted or or any, uh, any of those things, as, as far as I'm aware. I uh, came back in 1946. Uh, the team played fairly well, but finished second to the Red Sox, uh, who went on to lose to the St. Louis Cardinals in the 1946 World Series. In 1947, however, the Yankees uh, had a really pretty good season. Uh, they finished in first place and uh, went on to defeat the Brooklyn Dodgers in the 1947 World Series. And Joe had a good World Series. He had a good season. And uh, so it was a good year for the Yanks. So this is, without a question, I mean, certainly the most valuable photograph in the whole uh, series. But let's go through them 
and see who else is uh, is in there. So the next is probably the second uh, most popular uh, picture from this group, and that's Yogi Berra, looking very young, I think I, I might add. Uh, Yogi really, uh, uh, you might say this was really his rookie year. Uh, he, he played extremely well, uh, but he was still learning the position of catcher, and so the Yankees brought Bill Dickey back uh, as a kind of a player coach to, uh, to teach uh, Yogi how to catch. And uh, I think he did a great job because Yogi became one of the premier catchers in the uh, American, if not major leagues. So the next uh, player is Phil Rizzuto. Rizzuto was, uh, of course, the Yankee shortstop. He took over that position from Frank Crosetti. Uh, and uh, uh, Phil was uh, an outstanding shortstop. He went on to become captain of the Yankees, uh, the spark plug uh, that ignited the the big boppers, and uh, uh, so much so that uh, in uh, 1950, uh, he became uh, the league's most valuable player. So th this is Phil Rizzuto. Uh, next is Bill Bevins. Bill Bevins uh, had a... Uh, a reasonably decent year for the Yanks in 47, but his star was to really shine in the 1947 World Series in which he carried a no-hitter into the, uh, uh, through eight and two-thirds innings. Uh, although he was a long way from a perfect game because he also had nine walks. Um but uh, nevertheless, uh, the Dodgers couldn't get a hit off of him until with two outs in the ninth inning, uh, Cookie Lavagetto doubled and uh, broke up uh, the no-hitter. Next is uh, a Yankee infielder, who uh, uh, Bobby Brown, who had an outstanding 1947 World Series. Uh, he could always hit. Uh, he played several different infield positions, including uh, second base and third base. And uh, while he was uh, playing baseball with the Yankees, he also went to medical school and, uh, and became a, a, a cardiac physician. Uh, he also, uh, after uh, after retirement from his time as a physician, uh, became president of the American League. So Bobby Brown certainly achieved a lot of notoriety uh, in uh, outside of baseball as well as inside. Uh, next is one of the Yankee uh, pitchers, uh, Spud Chandler, had a really good 47 season, but never really uh, was able to replicate that. Uh, And uh, next is uh, Frank Coleman, uh, probably better known as Jerry. Uh, he was, uh, again, another another infielder, played several positions, but most of his uh, uh, notoriety uh, while with the Yankees was uh, at second base. Of course, he's probably better known by most now as uh, one of the uh, all-time great broadcasters for the San Diego Padres was with them for many, many, many years. And uh, regrettably, he passed away not too long ago. Next is uh, John, and I'm not sure how you pronounce his last name. I think it's Corridor. Um, he was a, a coach uh, and a, uh, a pitcher for the Yankees. Um, not certainly not one of the superstars. Uh, here's uh, the previously mentioned Frank Crosetti. He lost his 
starting shortstop position to uh, uh, to the uh, Phil Rizzuto, to the scooter, and uh, <clears throat> was a longtime coach for the Yankees. Uh, in fact, he uh, was able to boast that uh, he had uh, well over 40 uh, consecutive years as a, a player or coach for the New York Yankees. His nickname was Crow, and he was really uh, a, a no-foolishness kind of a guy. Uh, here's a guy who coached for the Yankees, also played for the Yankees, but uh, really achieved most of his fame uh, as the manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers uh, during the uh, early years uh, before uh, Walter Alston. Uh, he took the uh, Dodgers to uh, several World Series, but uh, was unable to um, unable to lead them to the to the victory that they so. Um, so much desired. Next is uh, one of the pitchers for the Yankees, Randy Gumpert. Um, again, and you know, a, a, a journeyman a pitcher who uh, really achieved great uh, fame or fortune, but uh, you know, was was pretty stalwart. Next, we come to the manager of the Yankees in 1947, Bucky Harris. Uh, he led the Yankees to uh, the 47 World Series and won that World Series. The next year, how uh, he did not uh, perform quite as well, perhaps, and the Yankees uh, came in, uh, really came in third place uh, behind Cleveland and Boston. Um, and so at the end of the 48 season, uh, he was... Uh, uh, replaced by Casey Stengel. And next we have a guy who, uh, uh, along with uh, Joe DiMaggio, uh, and a guy we're going to see later, whose name I'll mention then, um, really gave a decade's worth or more, a little more than a decade's worth of service, as the Yankee outfield, uh, in between the, uh, you know, the, uh, the Babe Ruth teams, the Blue Gehrig teams, uh, up to the days of Mickey Mantle and Whitey Ford teams. Eric uh, would achieve a lot of uh, uh, fame and fortune for uh, his leadership on the 1949 team when uh, Joe DiMaggio was injured for the first half of the season. And here's a guy that you'll remember more for his tenures, two-time tenure as manager of the Yankees, Ralph Houck. Uh, Ralph Houck was uh, known as the major. Uh, he was really a coach on the field since uh, he played behind Yogi Berra and then later behind uh, Elston Howard. Uh, so he really didn't get to see, uh, and, and of course, behind Bill Dickey earlier in his career, didn't really get to see a lot of playing time. Uh, here, here's another Yankee pitcher, Bob Johnson, or I'm sorry, Bill Johnson. Um, Bill Johnson was, again, another uh, regular uh, journeyman pitcher for the Yanks, and uh uh, good, but not uh, not certainly not in a great category. And uh, I'm sorry, I said he was a pitcher. He was an infielder. That this guy is, uh, I believe, is the pitcher. This is Don Johnson, uh, who was the pitchers. Uh, here's the third guy in the Yankee outfielder at Yankee outfield during the. Uh, uh, mid 30s uh, through the uh, uh, late 40s early 50s charlie king Kung keller and as his name might imply he was relied upon for uh, hitting with some power uh, which he did here's another yankee uh, infielder uh, 
outfielder, Johnny Lindell, uh, who played really a good bit whenever Joe DiMaggio was uh, injured and couldn't play. Uh, the next guy, uh, George McQuinn. Uh, McQuinn was an infielder also. Uh, actually, w w was a, uh, elected to the All-Star team. I'm, I'm going to say maybe 1948 uh, on the All-Star team. George McQuinn. This is the guy that uh, uh, Chuck Dressen went on to say when he, they asked him uh, why the Yankees were so successful against the Red Sox or against the uh, Brooklyn Dodgers, he said two words, Joe Page. Uh, Page started, uh, but most, mostly known uh, for his relief efforts and a really key part of the 1949-51 uh, uh, Yankees. Uh, Page was known as a uh, uh, rabble rouser and a guy who liked to party, a uh, frequent uh, breaker of curfews, and uh, he just enjoyed having a good time. Uh, when he developed arm problems, though, uh, his uh, past uh, history with the Yankees didn't serve him very well, and he was gone by the uh, uh, later in the early 50s. Here's a guy who who was a great pitcher during the time that he played. Uh, Allie Reynolds was known as the Super Chief because of his uh, his Indian heritage. Uh, I'm not going to be able to pronounce the name of the tribe uh, to which his uh, relations belonged, but uh, in any case, uh, he was a guy who had was very confident in his fastball. Uh, and uh, would, would put it up against uh, just about anybody, uh, in, including, at least in his mind, including Bob Feller. So he was good. I mean, he was very good. And a key part of the Yankee uh, run of championships between 1947 and 1953. Uh, the next fellow up is uh, Aaron Robinson. Uh, Aaron Robinson was a backup catcher for the Yankees, another guy that didn't didn't see much action uh, because Yogi did most of the catching, took care of most of the catch duties for the Yanks. Uh, this guy had the nickname of Spec, Frank Shea, uh, who wore glasses, although he's not wearing them in this picture, <laughs> uh, had a wonderful 1947 season, and... Uh, World Series. Uh, fortunately, he really was never able to quite repeat that level of performance in later years. Uh, this next fella, Silverstein, uh, was also a backup catcher and like, uh, uh, like Aaron Robinson, didn't really see very much service uh, in, with the Yankees. And the last pair in the picture pack uh, is George Snuffy Sternweiss. And uh, Snuffy was an infielder. Uh, I think he played mostly second base because, uh, again, Rizzuto did all the heavy lifting at shortstop. And uh, so he was a key part of the uh, Yankee infield. Yeah, during the 1947 season and in, and in the World Series. So that's it. Um, those are the uh, all of the pictures in the picture pack. We'll, we'll leave with uh, Snuffy uh, at the forefront. Um, I hope that you enjoyed looking at this. I'm, I'm really thrilled to have this um, uh, in my collection. Um, I've got several other picture packs, but they're all much later. I've got a, got a Phillies picture pack. I've got uh, a couple of Yankees uh, team cards and uh, stadium cards, I guess you'd call them. 
as well as uh, one one picture pack. Um, uh, but again, those are those are much listed by far the earliest one that I have. So I'm glad to have it. Uh, I got it. You know, Joe uh, DiMaggio has so few uh, playing days cards that you almost have to rely on other things uh, like the Wheaties card that I showed the other day. I got another Wheaties card coming. Uh, I hope someday to get uh, the Burke Ross Joe DiMaggio. Uh, I'd really like to have that. Um, I'm working on getting the 19, a copy of the 1941 play ball, uh, and I'd like to get the 1940 play ball. I have the 1939 play ball, which you saw if you uh, were able to look at my uh, video on the 1939 play ball set. So that's, uh, anytime you can add anything, playing days, Joe DiMaggio, for uh, for the price that I paid for this picture pack, you, you really are well advised to jump right on it. So that's what I have for you today. Um, in the meantime, uh, this is Rocket Rick J18, wishing that all your collecting dreams come true. <laughs>